Good morning. Have you ever wondered why some people uh, excel at STEM subjects while others don't? My name is Saad Sleeman and today I'm going to share with you my research finding about why change attitudes toward mathematics. So my profile and how it all started, this talk is grounded in my experience as um, math and computing lecturer and game researcher. I view and value education and can be obtained given the right conditions, right environment and right surrounding, just like seats. Having enjoyed teaching and learning math and computing, I could sense splendid significance with these subjects when I explored them further at university level because adults learn what they want to learn and what is meaningful for them to learn. It was this type of understanding that led me to wonder about the notions of negative attitude towards mathematics. Whenever I meet new people, meet new undergraduates, I couldn't envision how there are such unsettled emotions toward mathematics. So I would like you to look at them and just think about what they are and what do they convey. Or even this. Or even what else? This. Ironically, many people love counting money, but they hate maths. My research journey started in my class with Michelle. Michelle is a mature student within my class, and what she said has started my journey. She said, or noted, I hate fractions, and I've never been good with them. Having graduated with first class degree in mathematics and computing, I couldn't understand how does it happen that there are some people or people who do not understand mathematics so that I can help Michelle and others. So I looked at understanding. So is it a combination of cognitive, social, and affective element? It is progression from where individuals gain knowledge, skills, attitudes. According to Polodial 2008 and Jarvis 2006, it is a transformation leading to change and social development of the person's personal personality, attitudes, behavior, and, and personality. Therefore, learning is, is a set of cumulative skills, attitude, social behavior, cognitive, social behavior, and personality, leading, therefore, to, to, to new actions and behavior. Then I looked at SCAM, 1986. He defined learning as there are two types of learning. It is about a set of instruction that one needs to follow when learning. Intelligent learning is where we ask what it is and what is the effect. Then I looked at emotion or the hate word. What is the hate word? So um, the hate word is aversion, dislike, and it is related to negative or uh, negative experience. So, it is originated from emotions. It comes under the fee under feelings. It can be positive or negative, such as fear, uh, hate, love, and happiness, according to Bowler 2009 and Louise 2013. Then I looked at attitudes. So, what is attitudes? Attitudes is how individuals think or approach everyday task. It is a state of readiness to respond in a certain way. According to the Bueno 1992, good attitudes are linked to good thinking. Bad or negative attitudes are associated with bad thinking. However, both thinking can be practiced. Then I looked at Maslow's hierarchy of needs. We all know Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So motivation or the desire to meet unsatisfying need and reach a satisfying level. How lecturers can help their learners or their students to, to move from physiological needs to self-accusation or self-fulfillment. So we need to, you need to learn to know your learners and help them in their learning journey. 
I also looked at self-determination and the ability to say to yourself that you can and will achieve what you would like to achieve it's within your own self. I also looked at the week, uh, fixed and growth mindset. I looked at the skill, ZDP, scaffolding, modeling, peer work, group work, and how you can help your learners. I also looked at Smolin's basic motivational need in terms of motivation, frustration, and what that leads in terms of behavior. I also look, looked at Department of Education standards teachers. Part of the teachers' standards is to have high expectation of the students and raise their motivation. So teachers can play a big or significant role in motivating learners. Confidence is a, is a key to success, whether it is little or immense, according to Scamp 1986. High motivated learners can, can be more motivated than people who have low motivation or have unstable uh, control, unstable locus of control, and blame lack for their success or failure. So therefore, it's become apparent to me that when expectations or needs are not met, it leads to frustration, i.e. changing the behavior, disliking the subject or disliking them. Back to Michelle case. Did I really solve her problem after demonstrating um, examples and providing a one-to-one -one session? The answer is, I don't know. This led to empirical work where I looked at what factors cause negative attitude toward mathematics. Because I would like to change attitude toward mathematics. So what I have found, there are physical experience within people's life. This experience affects how they view and value their learning. So these experiences can be at home or in school. Then another one stated, I feel confused and annoyed as you need to understand the topic in order to achieve the right answers. There's also a theme of poor teaching, no engagement and attainment. For example, one of my participants stated, Max, it's time to change. You have to cross-link your knowledge because it's completely different. Another one stated, because at the time you cannot relate it to everyday life. For instance, English you use it every day. With maths, you just insult in shops in terms of money. It is easy to, to, to have, in terms of money, it is easy to handle something if you have some connections or some emotions toward it. Now, there was also lack of confidence, fear, and the popular culture of I hate maths, or it is cool not to be good at maths. For example, some of the participants stated, I don't like worthy questions, I just feel blank, I just give up and told myself that I can do it. Others express their feeling of lack of understanding the, ma the, the, the maths and, as fairly reasonable and annoyed when they cannot um, get the right answer or, or fear and some sense of anxiety, mass anxiety. There was also identities and how people view themselves, whether they have fixed mindsets or growth mindsets. There was also motivation, no motivation. So that was another thing. Another thing that's come up is parenting styles, where students have some support where their parents provide the support, they achieve well and they have a good behavior. Where the parents were working or not academically able to support their children, that affects um, how they, they look at maths and how they um, perceive the maths. So what I found that when users or learners' expectation, needs, 
or understanding are not met, it leads to a change in behavior, i.e. disliking the mass or learning. When learners or users understanding behavior or expectation are met, it leads to a change in behavior, I like the subject or I like the learning. So, what can we recommend for policy and practice? So, England, it comes, or England, England is at crossroads in terms of meeting its future la labor market. We keep hearing about we have shortage in doctors and nurses, and it is true we have shortage in, in doctors and nurses. But if we don't have good, highly qualified math teachers, how can we fill the gap? How can we ever fill the gap? How can we compete with Shanghai kids? We need, therefore, we need to recruit high, high, highly qualified math teachers, not just in secondary, but in primary schools, in order to, to help their understanding. We need also to increase the, fund, the funding to education, not to cut it, not to cut it down, as the API and independence reports indicated. Primary maths is very important. It is fundamental, as it forms the basis of mathematical understanding prior to transition to secondary or even to post 16. Educational leaders, you have a big role. You need or you are required to ascertain that student, that student um, master the basic before moving on to higher level. Parents, yes, we are the parents, you need to get involved in your education, in your children's education. Research, many research have shown, and my research have indicated that where there was little support of the parents, from parents' side, students achieve, achieve well and, and this led to uh, the way how they perceive maths. So even every little, it helps to increase their understanding and how they view it. Where there was lack of support, it disengagement and, and lead to um, attitudes toward mathematics. And this, is, and this is to improve our economy and improve productivity. Maths is creative and highly interconnected disciplines. It is about patterns, it is language, structure, and it is crucial in the modern world. It is key to employment and to increase productivity. So I would like to change the popular culture of I hate maths. Change the popular culture of I hate maths. You may wonder how can we do that? Well, there is games. I am a game researcher, so I'm looking at games and how we can use them in higher education. Why? Because historically, simulation games have been used in the avi aviation system to train pilots uh, to learn or to teach them about how to fly planes. It has been used in the military to train soldiers about how to handle weapons and first aids. Thank you.